Welcome one, welcome all to episode T.O. of the NFC East Mixtape. That's right, baby, 81. This is the most unique podcast you can get across all of SB Nation. You can listen to it on any of the four NFC East blogs. That is Blogging the Boys for Dallas Cowboys coverage, Bleeding Green Nation for the currently first place Philadelphia Eagles, Hogs Haven for the Washington Commanders. They are riding caboose right now in the division. And of course, Big Blue View for the New York Giants. You can also watch this show on the Bleeding Green Nation YouTube channel or the Blog and the Boys YouTube channel. Subscribe to wherever you're accessing these things. Leave a rating, write a review. Those things make us happy. This has been quite the season for the NFC East mixtape. He is Brandon Lee Godden. I am Arjo Cho. And BLG, I say that it was just two weeks ago that we did our first ever live show. And now I'm not one of these DFW people. I, I wasn't born in Dallas, Fort Worth, so I don't root for all the DFW teams. I'm a very mm. loud and proud Houston Astros fan. My NBA team of choice, in case anybody's curious, is the San Antonio Spurs. So, you know, I'm I'm you know, I'm a citizen of the state in that sense. Uh, but this is uh the NFC's mixtape with my Houston Astros against your Philadelphia Phillies, the least original name in all the professional sports in the World Series. Hey, look at the mixtape. What a good time to be alive. I don't think you know what a Philly is. I don't care, honestly. It's um, something you have to look it up. But uh I, you got I, the name of the podcast to. wrong, as people often do. It's not the NFC mixtape. I didn't say that. I just said it quickly. Like am I, you know what I mean? Like I'm not enunciating properly. I know it's the name. The World Series mixtape here, uh, RJ. There we go. A little misdirect for you. Um very excited. The Phillies are going to beat your Astros, and if they don't, it's going to be because the Astros cheat again. Which, yeah, I'm going to bring that up a lot because they I did, love that is like the not. plan for everybody who plays the Astros, right? Like, like you look at like Yankees fans today, or a few days, the last few days at least, have been like, you know, they're the people who are like, we want Houston. It's like in the in the we want Houston. There's nothing about like they cheated, they suck, whatever. It's it's all about like they're amazing. We want to vanquish them. But the moment they lose, it's like, well, they cheat anyway. Who cares? Blah blah. Um, people are stupid. People are dumb. Um, I don't know if there's a bigger big brother, little brother dynamic across all of sports between professional teams right now than the Astros and the Yankees. Uh, mm. I'll just say that. But Okay. Um, well, the Yankees aren't there. Uh, the Astros are for the AL and the Phillies are going to beat them in the World Series. A lot of parallels to the 2017 Eagles with this oh Phillies team. It's true in terms of this team on an unlikely run in some ways and uh, some unlikely heroes along the way. And uh, you right, know, the unlikely hero, the guy exciting. that gave three hundred million dollars to, that was super unpredictable. Not Bryce what, Harper. A, what a shot! Not talking about him, talking about you know other people on the team. You know, uh, like that's Ellie Dallas Cowboys fan. Told Bryce Harper, by the way, a lot of people. I mean, he's worn plenty of Eagles gear since being in Philly. Nah, and also, that's are you going to take solace in that when uh, the Phillies beat the Astros in the World Series? That he's a Cowboys fan. Um, I mean, I will tweet yeah. that out. Don't get me wrong, uh, I mean, but okay. I was actually I was going to tweet gonna this out. I was going to tweet this out, but I was saving it for here because um this is an, a unique world series like my team's in it obviously but because of the mixtape and this is kind of our favorite part of it i have all these like philadelphia followers now because mm. i'm every eagles fan's favorite cowboys fan um so that being said i'm i'm offering this as a as a token as an olive branch of sorts all right the last time the houston astros won the world series was 2017 when the Philadelphia Eagles won the Super Bowl. So either the Philadelphia Phillies are going to win the World Series or history is going to be lined up to repeat itself and the Philadelphia Eagles win the Super Bowl. So, you know, hey, if you can't have one, you're seemingly going to have the other at least. I do agree that it seems too unlikely that <laughs> both teams would win this year. So if one wins, if the Phillies win this, Mm, that's kind of a, that's that, a t- stock down this, for the Eagles a little bit, but this happens a lot. Like people will be like, is insert whatever city, the like best sports town go like, remember San Francisco had the run when the giants won their three world series. And that was when uh, the Niners went to the super bowl that they lost that they, for whatever reason celebrated uh, this past week, our, our buddy Rob stats was down real bad uh, last week and, and didn't even know it, which was the sad part. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, I don't know of another city that that's come close to that kind of success. Um, I mean, I mean recently, like, uh, yeah, well, like LA like won Gi- a bunch of stuff, right? Well, you, well, you had the Giants, and then the Warriors kind of came in after, so you could kind of go San Francisco a little bit there. Um, Although LA had a bunch of fake titles. Yeah, so I was the, gonna say like people the say the Mouse. bubbles and stuff, yeah, right? All that. So, yeah. Um, 
the Ram, even the Rams title. To me, the Rams title feels more fake, fl- fake than the Bucks. I don't know why. <laughs> the, the, the Rams were just not like the best team in the NFL last year. Not that that's always what the Super Bowl right. winner is, but like it's just I don't know. And and also, no one cared. No one even cared. It's like no one was mad that the Rams won. I, really, I said that and, on the ESPN NFL yeah, show in, over in the, the offseason. Nobody like nobody no was like cared. ugh. Like if the Cowboys or Eagles won the Super Bowl, half of our audience would hate life for a year. Because you know who like, are the Rams diehards? I mean, there's cer- there's certainly you know you can find people for sure. There's there's people, but like relative to other fan bases can you, you know especially of, one can that you think moved. of a celebrity like we can think of like famous cowboys and eagles fans right that like kind of put on or ride for their teams like you know whether it's like recording artists at concerts or like bryce harper or whatever the case may be like like an actual ram fan not like you know right not just like part of the entourage that's yeah. there now. no like, not really i mean you just yeah. see a lot of people show up because it's la and why not but that's not that's not football either. That's basketball. Like that's what you you know you do for the Lakers. Like you're a star. You go to the you don't go to like the Super Bowl or a football game and like hang out because like you're not even visible. You're just in a box somewhere. You know mm-hmm. like at the game. You know if you're Spike Lee or or whoever. You know someone like famous sitting on the sideline of the Garden. Like you're there. Like everyone can see you even when you're like the camera's not directly on you. But anyway, uh, we digress here. I will say on the To point you mentioned earlier. You know arguably as we as we've said uh <laughs> a white whale for for us in terms of uh guests definitely want to get to on i feel like he is the most nfc east mixtape player uh in possibly in nfc east history mm-hmm. that's very well said shout out of course to to um i don't know when episode 100 will be obviously it's in 19 weeks that's cool. what like um like five months from now so that's like march so maybe like free agency so who knows mm. maybe we maybe that's what we shoot for is to for episode 100 I would love uh, to have him on and like drink some of his wine and you know yeah. review that maybe or whatever. Yeah, maybe. Um, we've gotten six and a half minutes in and haven't talked about any of the current events in the NFC East, which is kind of par for the course here. Um, the Philadelphia Eagles were on by, um, so they therefore were the only team in the division not to play this past week, but they were also the only team in the division not to win a perfect clean sweep. For the NFC East this past week, the Dallas Cowboys downing the Detroit Lions, the New York Giants surviving against the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Washington Commanders with Taylor Heineke. Not Tyler. I don't know why the national media can't remember this dude's name. I never um, see that. I feel like people say that they they do that, but I never see it that way. I hear it. I've heard of it okay. in many podcasts, but I, I, you're right. I mean, I, well, I think when you write something, you're like more prone to double check. Yeah, but, that's a good um, point. I probably I've definitely have never heard seen it. it, but maybe you've heard it. Yeah. Um, they took down the Green Bay Packers. Um, in fact, I picked the Commanders over on on our other show that we do on the Espionation NFL mm. show, you did not. You were not brave enough or bold enough. So um, we put you in the icebox and you lost. Um, I, I mean, obviously we have to go in divisional standing, but like, what is there to say about the Eagles? Like they were on by. You know? Well, they were on by and the Philadelphia Phillies are in the World Series. So that's a big deal. Uh, uh, with the Eagles. Oh, I, I wanted to say one thing on this, like ser- a serious thing. I like um, when teams in the same city are either like related in mascot like i love that the detroit lions and detroit tigers are you know obviously both in detroit and they're actually like right near one another ford field and comerica park that's cool to me i also like when they have the, like similar color schemes i think that's really cool um like you pittsburgh. look at like like pittsburgh exactly i think that's a really cool thing um i'm not saying it's a not cool thing but like the phillies colors are like almost the most opposite things you can get to from the eagles like if you're like a diehard philly your wardrobe has got to look a little bit unique you know it's something like that's all i'm saying like it's, it's just got to be a weird thing it's not as cool as like say pittsburgh in that one sense which philly sports team do you think has the best colors out of like let's the say sixers. the big four yeah the sixers i think a yeah. lot of people i like the flyers i think the black and orange is kind of actually pretty sick it's, um it's not as like adaptable. Like you can't wear that all year long. Mm, disagree. Um, the Sixers and Phillies, you know, more similar, not identical, but like you know, more similar. The red, white, and blue kind of stuff. But um, uh, yeah. So anyway, what's going on with the Eagles? Well, they're on by, so that's cool. Um, you know, it's kind of the focus on the trade deadline. No, like huge rumors. There was something about their interest in Brian Burns. I don't think that's going to happen. Uh, Wasn't there? I saw you write about they had some. They poked around the Christian McCaffrey thing or whatever it was. Yeah, uh, I think it was Albert Breer who said they. They, but it was like very. Um, uh, Just like, hey, what's the interest? Yeah, right. it's like, hey, what? Hey, can we give you a fourth for him? And Carolina be like, no. Um, so I think it was kind of just you know checking in on the price. Although I think if you want to make that into a bigger point, it's and you know Dave Glazer just said today the Eagles. Uh, he could see them trading for a running back so that they had interest in CMC. I think, you know, speaks to that a little bit there. Um, so, you know, Kareem Hunt has been thrown out there. Melvin Gordon has ties to Nick Sirianni. Um, David Montgomery is someone people think who could be available. Um, I, I think Jamal Howard Williams. 2.0. 
not as good. Um, I think, uh, at least, you know, from the stats thus far, I think um, Jamal Williams from the Lions could be another name too. You know, someone who can kind of provide power slash and or um, can give some this team some more pass catching juice. I don't take big takeaway from what I'm saying here is I don't think the Eagles are going to make any kind of like huge splash move because I don't really need to. You know, their roster is mostly set, but I think they could look to add some depth here. I will note that Howie Roseman has made a trade at every deadline since 2017, which is the JHI trade year, uh, mm-hmm. except for 2020 when the team was really bad. So, you know, history says he's going to make a move. It might not be the biggest move, but he's probably going to do something. Um, so I guess that's really all that's going on. Uh, okay, so, um, so we're, we on, we're on trade watch for the Eagles, um, sure. obviously. Um, they're 6-0. and Speaking of the Steelers, that is their opponent. Yeah, we spin they, ahead a little oh, bit. Oh, they, uh, they were once the same team. They were called the Steagles. Oh, my god! <laughs> no one, no one talks the... about this as yeah, much I, as you do. I promise you it will be said on the broadcast this week. I of course promise it will. You. But That's stupid. Why do, we don't have to say do. this. Like, I hate when when like broadcast parachute in and they haven't done an Eagles game or whatever, so they feel the need to like, you know, I tell you what, Jalen Hurts, when he got benched for Tua Tunga Vailo at Alabama, he really locked down and he got it together and he took what he needed to over to Oklahoma. Like, we don't need the same stories told, people. That's all I'm saying. Um, but back to the trade deadline. The Dallas Cowboys did make. Oh, well, I don't think we were done with the Eagles. I thought we, we oh, don't want to spin into a preview at all because we. No, can we're going to about... preview all the games after. We got to like go in sequence. Like we got to tie a bow on the week and then look forward. So the Dallas Cowboys did pull off a trade on Tuesday, the day we record this, um, sending their 2023 sixth round pick to the Las Vegas Raiders for defensive tackle Jonathan Hankins. Um, they did also receive the Raiders seventh round pick in 2024. Um, so that's a, a true, like, we really just want to move on from this guy, uh, move uh, from the Raiders. By the way, I was going to say, um, when we mentioned Christian McCaffrey, just back to the Rams, they're so, like, insignificant that, like, if any other team had what is going on with Cam Akers going on with them, like, people would, it would be, like, a daily story around the NFL. You know what I mean? Like, like team just, like, all of a sudden doesn't want to play this dude and is like, he's done. We, we, he's got to be like, what on earth? You know what I mean? Like, it's it's proof of how, like, juiceless they are. Like, nobody cares. They're so uninteresting. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of that. You, I, I know you mentioned that on the SB Nation NFL show as well. It's like, well, the Rams are moving on from him, and it's like, okay, but but why? Yeah, <laughs> no one, exactly. No like, ever, nobody, why. nobody cares. It's, it's, it's just very definitive. Well, they're moving on from him. It's just accepted fact. It's like, okay, and, but, sure, well, but like why? the day the day after it was like, oh, he's played his last down for the team. Yeah. Why? Like, <laughs> okay, like, but it's like the the insiders are focusing on the, like how definitive it is, like. It's just it's, he's done. It's like well, the, okay, yeah, I, get, it, I trust you, but tell I don't me like why. to come on here and and like you know hurl poop at the national insiders, but like they won't, they don't attack the Rams the way that like they don't press those buttons the way they do for. Mm-hmm. And I'm not even saying like the Cowboys or Eagles, but like the way they do other teams. Um, I don't know if that's like Curry curring favor with like Sean McVay and stuff, or if it's just like <sighs> well, a truly insignificant thing. There are connections there, right? Isn't that like where some of the studio stuff is based too? Like there's some like LA. Right. Connection. I mean, also I think the NFL is very sensitive about how the mm-hmm. LA teams are viewed because uh, conspiracy theory back in 2017, like they won all the awards, which is like what their first or second year there. Like McVay won coach of the year over Doug right. Peterson, which is dumb. And then like Gurley went off into play. Like they won all the awards that year. And I think it was like a big, Hey, football's back in LA. And like, we need to justify it as much as possible. So mm-hmm. uh, I think there's some of that to it in terms of not going after that team. Jonathan Hankins though. Um, Currently, I know people feel different ways about PFF, uh, but he is currently by Pro Football Focus um, graded better, graded, you know, has graded more or better. And every well. Cowboys defensive lineman except Tristan Hill. Every Cowboys defensive tackle except okay, Tristan Hill. Tackle. I, th- this has been the like one weakness of Dallas's defense so far this year. And I would say Philadelphia exploited that. Washington exploited that. Right. Um, and then just like, you know. Ron Rivera away from it. Uh, oh. The Rams didn't even attack it because who knows why they hate Cam Akers. Um, so, you know, this is good. I, and for like such a low cost, like I'm, I'm all the way down. I don't know what's going on with Neville Gallimore. Um, that is a, a thing prior. He was inactive for the Lions game. He did not have any injury designation mm. whatsoever um, throughout the week. And then, like as the inactive list came out, there was just like, well, he has a wrist injury. And Stephen Jones was on 105 through the fan on Monday and was like, I wouldn't call it a healthy scratch. So, um, well, then why wasn't he on the injury report? I know. I mean, that that's a weird situation. And then, and then they trade for a defensive tackle. You know what I mean? Like it's I, again, I'm not saying like, oh, he's totally healthy, but I think it's a, it's a weird confluence of events going on there. Uh, but they did win. Uh, you mentioned Jamal Williams. They beat the Detroit Lions 24 to six. I do think, and I did say this on the SB Nation NFL show, um, that the score is far more generous to the Cowboys than the game actually was. Um, I agree. I watched big, this game. 
big time fourth quarter for them. When the fourth quarter started, they were up 10 to six. Um, and I don't know why Tony Romo had this like personal vendetta against the Cowboys in this game. He was like openly doubting Trayvon Diggs's interception for like an hour. Um, he engine like, and then I know he was talking about field position. Um, you said you watched the game. The Lions got down to the one yard line late. Looks like they're going to score a touchdown, go up 13 to six. Um, and they're down at the one yard line, half yard line, whatever. Uh, the next play, Demarcus Lawrence pokes the ball free, and obviously the rest is history. But Romo was like, I tell you what, even after they like watched and showed that Detroit was down short of the goal line, Romo was like, I would have challenged it anyway. Like, what are you doing, Romo? <laughs> like, this is stupid. Like to to gain an inch, like that's that's dumb to me. Um, I I in one way am am more firm in my conviction that like we need to stop hyping up the Lions. This is you know. There's like, this is not a rebuild. This is just a bad coach right now. Like I, there's not a reason to believe in this team right now. We, we got to stop trying to give Dan Campbell some benefit of the doubt. Um, Dak Prescott, you know, had some rust. I think that, that was obvious, but ultimately finished 19 of 25, 207, the touchdown um, looked like himself in moments, had some bad moments during a triple coverage twice in the first half. Uh, you can argue he got a little bit lucky. Uh, I don't think it's a strong or hard to argue thing. Um, but it was a very positive first step. I mean, they're they're shaking things off. They're they're kicking the rust off, whatever, while winning. I mean, they're five and two. This was impossible a month ago. Uh, I just wondered the tone of some of these Cowboys fans who were saying, "Oh, the, the Eagles didn't beat the Cowboys very impressively." Like, it mm, seems like a little talking out of both sides of the mouth. Not from you, but I feel like from others. Like, from like, here's I, the point here's, is, if here's the if logical you're say truth. the Eagles win wasn't that impressive for the Eagles, then you can't say like this win is an amazing one for the Cowboys. I what I don't be like, consistent if you're I'm saying if you were like oh that Eagles win for the Eagles that wasn't even that impressive for them I don't then see you can't like be a Cowboys fan saying this Lions win is awesome this win over the Lions is awesome I don't think anybody rational is saying that um to I be hope clear. Not. but I think that I think the argument is it was not fair is not the right word so don't take it that way but it was not a fair fight it was not it was not the best version of the Cowboys that that can be conceived that played the Eagles and so like Again, I'm not saying it wasn't fair. It's hollow. It's not real. It's Mickey Mouse, whatever. But the argument was, okay, well, this team is going to get their quarterback back, and that makes them a very different football team than the one that lost to the Eagles. And similarly, um, I don't think that any Cowboys fan is, like, pounding their chest, like, oh, man, they beat the Lions, whatever, blah, blah. But for what it's worth, this was the number one scoring offense in the NFL a few weeks ago. Granted, they've really cooled off, obviously. Um, the Cowboys did benefit greatly from some turnovers, but some turnover prone players and not a great head coach, like I said. Um, and contextually, again, this was Dak Prescott's return. Like it was always going to be bumpy and shaky. So I think people, I think the rational take is to be very satisfied with what we saw and be hopeful about what's to come in the future. All right. So a couple takes on this game. Number one, who was it that said the Lions are one of the most overrated teams in the league this year when we did our little chat with the the whiskey influencer, our good friend Tim? Uh, on his page on Instagram, uh, I had said back in the summer, I felt like the Lions were being so underrated that they were then overrated. And I think that's it, there, there's that. a race to get in on the underrated team that it becomes a matter of like a team becoming overrated. Well, it's it's always the thing like we rail against too in terms of like someone bringing up something like it's like their idea and like no one else is saying it. Like, you know, who I think is underrated the Lions. It's like everyone is saying that. It's I don't so care what anybody true. says. The Office is the greatest show <sighs> of all time. Um, but yeah, so my biggest thing with the Lions and why uh, I had—it's not like I was like lowest on them, but like I think they were getting a little too much credit. They didn't really overturn their roster a lot, uh, which I think people just kind of glossed over that for some reason. And uh, further in this game specifically, and a reason why that offense has cooled off. So banged up, man. <laughs> They're missing like off oh, the linemen. They were missing DJ Shark. They were missing Amon Ross St. Brown got he knocked out like, yeah. early ish in the game. Like, so like what are, you, what are you working with at that point? Not to say um that they necessarily uh got all the juice out of the orange that they could um remaining and that they did pos everything possible, but still, like you're not working with a lot there. Uh Charles Harris, their top pass pass rusher, was also out. Like they're they're dealing with a ton of of injuries so um you know i was never deandre swift didn't play like you know right. to say at some point like I you mean, don't have but, enough but like, left. like both things could be true what you just said and that like even when all those things are there like they're not a great team you know what i'm saying like but they're not like a great team but they they're have cute like a and they're spunky chance. and like they haven't been good in a long time so everybody yeah. like kind of likes them and dan campbell says some weird stuff so it's like oh man I, I like the lions i want to be the only one no dude like they're bad um you know i will say so i tweeted this out i don't know if you saw 
on um on Tuesday. I forgot what I was gonna say on Sunday. Um the Dallas Cowboys defense obviously last year was incredible. Everybody knows that. Um to this point in the season, hang on, I'm trying to pull it up now. No, I can't find it. Um one second. Buy me some time while they pull it up. Cowboys did not score more than three points in the first half of this game. Mm. I also meant to say that that's not the best look. Um, obviously, they they did have a fumble strong, but... near the goal line, which yes. yeah, I mean it's a fumble, but like again, just for but still, it's pretty tough. I mean, like this Lions defense is like the worst in the end. It's been like the worst in the league, and to not well, their offense was the best in the league too. If we're you know what I mean, like what yeah. do you mean? I mean, like things change, like they like, oh, yeah, you know change like because everyone got hurt, though. I just outlined that the defense know, is also like, still banged up. It shouldn't. Okay. The point so is, here, the Cowboys should have been reasonably expected to score more than even 10 points, even if here they was don't my point. there uh, through seven games last year. Again, we all know that the 2021 Cowboys defense is very good through seven games. They had 12 sacks and 14 takeaways through seven games this year. They have 29 sacks or so 17 more and 12 takeaways. So two fewer. Um, I will say, so I tweeted this out and, you know, admittedly it was a cool set. So like all these people are like, Oh my God, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, look, and then all these people are taking their victory lap. Like I was told that the turnovers were going to regress to the mean. Yeah, they did. They had five against the lions. Five of their 12 turnovers this season came against the lions. Like let's, let's just, you know, relax is all I'm saying. I'm very excited about it, but let's relax. Um, a home contest against the bears on Sunday for the Cowboys. I actually feel really bad, and I don't think people in this position say this often, uh, but I'm going to so that I can always, um, you know, say that I'm be- I'm being fair. I think the Bears got screwed here. The Bears coming off of a road Monday night football game. So they're on a short week on the road, and they have to travel for this game against the Cowboys. That's unfair. I mean, it is unfair. I hate when that happens to teams. <sighs> okay. Um, how many? Well, no, I'm saying you. it's unfair for the Bears. I'm saying the Cowboys get given an no, advantage. I get it. I see what you're saying. Wow. I don't so know. Great. I don't know why do this is so hard for the NFL to like not do. You know what I mean? Um, like, I mean, it's probably going to happen at some point, but um, I saw, uh, um, I don't know who way, it was. I saw somebody, um, what is this week's Thursday night game or next? I don't know. Um, somebody is, um, is Bucks Ravens. Um, yeah. somebody's Thursday night game like coming up. Um, is like them or Monday night game is like them coming off their buy or something. So like, they don't even get the like advantage that a buy provides. Like that's mm. what I'm saying. These things should be uniform. Like every team coming off their buy should get a team coming off a Sunday game, or you should always schedule two, two teams facing one another that are both coming off their buy. Like the advantage should be equal, or, like whether it's an advantage or not, you shouldn't have some teams getting to face somebody coming off their buy. Some teams getting somebody off Monday night football, whatever, like different things happen and that shouldn't be. The yeah. Case. You shouldn't ha- get to play a home Thursday football game every year. I agree. All these things uh, apply. You got your wish. Way. Week, week 17 this year. Cow was at Tennessee Thursday night. Yeah. But isn't it coming off of the Thanksgiving game still? So they get like a full no, week to prepare th- for the first time this year. Again, this shows how little research you do. Uh, th- you have gotten your wish in week 17. The Cowboys will be coming off of a Sunday game mm. actually against um, the Detroit, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles. That Christmas Eve games on actually it's a Saturday, but it, it is closer than. Anything oh, yeah, that's ever. right. So, yeah, that's uh, right. I, I remember that. But, now. Yes. Yeah, so even when they're like, so disadvantaged, uh, it, they still it, get a little it bit is of a closer boost. than anything to, to be fair. But also, <laughs> uh, so they're coming off of a Saturday home game and then have to travel for for a road Thursday night. I brought this up on our live show. A lot of people were confused. The only road Thursday games the Cowboys have ever played so far have been preceded by their home Thanksgiving game. Right. So they have had Which... seven full. It's still, you know, people say like, oh, man, blah, blah. So they do have to go Sunday to Thursday to Thursday, which is a unique thing. But, you know. You, you can argue that you would rather have that than anything else. It is open to interpretation. The Eagles have a little bit of a weird thing coming up where they play on Thursday uh, against the Texans, and then they don't play again until Monday. So kind of an interesting long layoff between. Did you know there. that that game is happening in the middle of the World Series between Houston and Philadelphia? Oh it my is very gosh. convenient how it timed out where every off day in the World Series is an Eagles game. So the first one will be, so it'll be you know, Friday, the World Series starts both in Houston and then the Eagle Steelers game on Sunday and then three Phillies games off day Eagles. Uh, I mean, the way more coincidental Phillies, thing is the Thursday night game. Eagles so. Yeah. Well, uh, I'm just saying it worked out nicely for when yeah. the Phillies beat the Astros. Um, Do you really think that's happening? Like in your objective mind? You really <laughs> I don't happening? have any doubt in my mind. It's happening. Okay. All right. And what, I, how many it's games? The, it's the same thing. Um, it could be I get, I, if if they take one, I I, I think five is entirely possible. The team hasn't lost at home in oh the playoffs. You doubted the crowd. The Astros haven't this, lost at all in the playoffs. This crowd is crazy. Doesn't matter. I 
this is the dumbest thing that Philadelphia fans do. All right, is that you think the crowd is some sort of like dude? In, it's like crazy. Factor. You don't understand. You you're just right, don't Brandon. Understand. The, you weren't you're right. There. The, the Astros have How no idea. How much are tickets going right now? The, the Astros have Philly. no idea what a World Series or, or what Why a, do you think a, a hostile are that much? crowd is like. The, the Astros just played two games in New York, the like pinnacle different. of places that hate them. <sighs> Come on. Yeah. No, yeah. like New York's I, I mean, the toughest I'm, place to play. They've only won a billion championships. People are really starving for another one up there. I also think the reason Philadelphia tickets are more expensive because they haven't been to the world series in forever this is the Astros that's the fourth point and fans years. really want to be there like they're I, like again, fully this, invested this is not this, casual this idea that like oh they're There's gonna no yell they're, they're gonna call them cheaters like all right like, like they haven't been through like the tour of if any if literally any team in sports is prepared for a hostile maybe. environment it's the houston astros but um i digress Dude, cheap, uh, by the way speaking of new york the new york giants won again new york football the football is back in New yeah. York football giants. The New York back at football giants got the win 23 to 17. We also got to stop trying to make the Jaguars a thing. Like it's it's well, no longer it's no longer just a bad roster. It's also like they're not good. Um, well, I think a lot of it has to do with the quarterback. Like there was well, some yeah, really that's, that's what I mean. Like par- partly like we gotta we're gonna start placing I'm not saying Doug Peterson is like fifty percent of the problem. He's I, definitely got his his fair share, but Trevor I Lawrence, think Trevor Lawrence the is the chunk. majority. Like um, honestly, watching the as I watched this game as well, and there were I'm telling you, dude, there were two wide open touchdowns. One was on a wheel route. Like you just you know, you drop it in the bucket. Okay, it's somewhat of a tough throw, but like he's open. You have to hit that. If you're if you're the number one overall pick, you're the you know generational quarterback prospect, you make that throw. It's not that he had a clean pocket, misses that throw, and then he had another one where dude was literally wide open in the end zone, streaking free. And you could see, I don't know what happened. The ball coming off his hand was just like so weird. It's like Carson Wentzian level overthrows, where it's just for an inexplicable and it's inexplicable why he's overthrowing him by that much. And he left two touchdowns on the field like that. And that one of those drives was when they fumbled into the end zone and then turned it over. So, like, dude, Trevor Lawrence sucked in this game. And at the end of the game, obviously, like, he was bailed out, by the way. I don't know if you saw that. By He, like, he threw a pick right to... The roughing, I, the, the roughing the passer penalty in this game that was ridiculous. Yeah, but, like, the pick was such a bad... Like, who was he throwing to? Like, there's no one there. He just threw right to the Giants. And then, obviously, he throws short of the, uh, short of the marker in the end zone. At the end, like, he, he stunk, dude. He stunk in this game. And I, I just think he stinks. And and look, to the Giants' credit, they took advantage of it. But like, if you know, that's a competent quarterback there. He's making those throws, and that's not a Giants win. Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Mac Jones. Who's the best quarterback from that class right now? The best right now in terms of most accomplished, so not necessarily like the highest ceiling. You got to pick one right now and start a team with them. Start a team with them. You, um, you got to trade Jalen Hurts straight up for one of them right now. <laughs> you want me to say Justin Fields, so I'm not going to say it. No, I don't. Way. I really it's don't care f- who you say. I think it's a, it's a sad good question. performance. Yeah, I mean, maybe Trey Lance, just because he's like the ultimate unknown, and he might like he's so, pretty young. It's like, well, I'll take the lottery ticket, right? Like uh, the I'll devil take the hidden door. Yeah, I don't know yeah. over the ones I do. Yeah, I mean, I I think the I think the best Definitely argument is for Zach, Zach Wilson. Wilson. No, I mean, dude, like he I, sucks. Dude, I know he sucks. he sucks, but like they all he's suck. Terrible. I mean, but he's literally never looked good. Like Trevor Lawrence, at least has had like a good game or two. Mm. Zach Wilson has never even had like this a was supposed good to be game. about the Giants. Um, yeah. Anyway, two one hundred yard rushers. Daniel Jones, one hundred seven yards with eleven carries. Saquon Barkley. That that is the thing we have been the most wrong about in the history of the mixtape. That's granted, true. Granted, granted, it was very improbable, but to his credit, he pulled it off. I don't looks, regret it. It's like don't, I don't either. No, like you I would bet make, on running backs coming back from injury. That's not like a smart bet to me. <laughs> we we've joked about it, but he really is making it difficult. I think for them, um, in terms of what they're going to do with him in the off season. I think it's, well, it's we know still, what they're going to do. <laughs> I think it's still fair to move on from Daniel Jones, but I mean, man, oh, they're not they're not going to do that. I think he's actually um, played really well. I really like he's uh, not in a way where like he's like you know Mahomes or he's on fire and he's torching right. the defense, I mean, but he's he's gotten so good at like doing what Hurts does basically in terms of like managing the game, not turning it over, being smart with the ball and making really good accurate throws. And obviously his mobility is huge too. So yeah, I think they're I mean, it, it kind of looks dumb for them now in terms of like not picking up the fifth year option because that would have been a nice like another year to bring him back like one more year potentially just on that because now they're gonna have to pay him. Um but I, I think, think they might I live think with it, that. It enforces I agree with you that they'll live with it, but I think it enforces for me that like if you get to if you get to the like decision point a fifth year option, you always pick it up on a quarterback. Um, you always just you have to. Like it, you, it's the you know, upside. Because, yeah, exactly. Because of the bargain that it, it could be, and I recognize how like unlikely it is, but um who like Mitchell Trubisky's was declined. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying the Bears like probably feel like they would they wish they would have done that, but like 
again, I would rather take that lottery ticket than like banking on Justin Fields. You know what I mean? Working out. Uh, the Giants, according to 538, Pete Sweeney did not like this exercise on Monday Football Monday. I don't know if you heard that. Um, he mm-hmm. doesn't believe in in math, I guess. Uh, the New York Giants have the one. Uh, if if you factor in ties, they have the one, two, three, four, fifth best odds of making the playoffs this season. And this is mm-hmm. uh, 538's quarterback adjusted forecast. Um, so you know the only teams ahead of them, the Eagles and Bills, currently 99% chance playoff bound. Uh, the Chiefs, 96, Cowboys, 94, and my Minnesota Vikings at 92%. But the Giants ahead of the Titans, the Ravens, the Bengals, the Dolphins, all AFC teams, obviously. Uh, the Bucks, Bucks down at 61%, even including the division they play in. That's wild. Well, I mean, the, the yeah, I thought you were saying that's good. It's, no, it's no, 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 no. Like, that's that's really depressing if you're a Bucks fan. Like, because you should the win walk that, to the yeah, NFC. Yeah, South who is winning that? Div- I mean, probably I'm still take the Bucks to win that because everyone else is also so bad, but. If I have to like pick a non Bucks team that I like have to believe in, it's the Falcons. But I the, I don't want to do that. I guess yeah. The NFC South is the new NFC least. The uh, NFC I saw Lindsey Rhodes tweet this out. The highest point differential in the NFC South belongs to the Bucks. Do you know what it is? Um, minus three. It is the number of losses that the Houston Astros have in the playoffs so far. Zero. They have a zero point three even. That's cr- I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> the top two teams in the NFL by point differential are the Eagles and the Cowboys. Granted, the Cowboys just had an 18 point win. So that, you know, again, the Lions win yeah, has inflated the, a few things. The um, Cowboys have also played one more game than the Eagles. Yeah. I mean, I'm just putting that out there. Um, but um, I think the Giants are going to be a playoff team. I, I don't know. I, I We said this last week. This week's oh, yeah. Giants Seahawks game is a oh, nice. big game. I like the Seahawks, by the way. I know I, I made them my lock of the week last week. They're honestly, that was one of my biggest takeaways. You and I are very good at locks of the week, by the way, on the explanation. Six and one, right. baby. And the only one I did was emotional hedge. That's the only one I lost on. Um, uh, the Seahawks scare me in terms of like team that I think could be like the Phillies of the this NFL oh playoffs. God. Like this team like that you don't want to play that kind of comes out of nowhere. I, I do think there's something scary there. Like I'm, I'm more, I, I'm not like scared shaking my boots at them, but like they're, I think they have the potential to be a lot better than people realize. So that's, yeah, it's going to be a big game. And I think that I think I'm going to take the Seahawks to win it. I think Do you know what the line tight. is off the top of your head? I, don't um, know if left. I have not. Seattle by three. Should be. So, it sounds yeah, right. Kinda, yeah. I mean, I get it. I know. I mean, I don't know how that we talked about this, but like, I don't know how the Giants were underdogs last week. I can kind of get it this week because like we've seen the Seahawks put up a lot of points, but like, what was there to believe in the Jaguars? I mean, again, I understand that um, that the Giants have have their flaws, but um, this was a really good win for them. I mean, so say they lose to, um, like, I want to get to Thanksgiving because that's you know an important day, obviously, as, as we've talked about. Um, so say they lose, so they're six and two prior to the Seahawks. I think that's being conservative, but you know, you never know. Then they're on by. Uh, there are mm-hmm. two games before the Thanksgiving Day matchup: Houston and Detroit, both at home. Yeah, and then you're looking at what eight and two there. Eight and two, right? Eight and eight and two. And they team. could, eat, and you know, Seattle's beatable. So they could, they could feasibly go nine and one. Nine, if that, if they were nine and one on Thanksgiving, a they'd be nine and one, and their lone loss would be to the team that they're playing on Thanksgiving in the Cowboys. Um, by the way, I can't confirm this. But so the Cowboys are wearing their throwbacks on Thanksgiving. Obviously, you know the ones I'm talking about, the like navy with the white. Their uh, best shoulders. uniform, yeah. Um, wow. Never thought I'd see the day. Um, I don't like it because Good of the uniform. white helmet. Uh, but I think that the Giants are wearing their home jerseys, the like the light blue. I don't want that. I don't I don't I don't want the throwback against the blue. You you know what I'm saying? Like because the throwback's like m- mostly, mostly navy. Blue. Yeah, you can't have Navy against light blue. That would be weird. We're going to get something very strange this Sunday, by the way, uh, in case Cowboys fans don't know. They're going Navy top silver bottoms, which they rarely do at home. And I believe, Brandon, the Bears are wearing their orange helmets and orange mm. uniforms. So we got Navy and orange. How are we talking very about Houston the Cowboys Astros week, though? In the what? Giants segment here. Um, why do you think the Giants are good? Like, what do you think? I mean, obviously, Dable is getting a lot of credit. I think he deserves it. And, and uh, as we said last week, I don't think it's just him. I think it's the coaching staff as a whole. I think it's a, a strong coaching staff. At the same time, like, you still have to admit, like, they, they can't keep winning all these one-score games, like, forever. Like, it's gonna, like there's going to be negative regression there at some point. Although, I will say, it does scare me that they're getting what they're getting out of this team. 
because you know you think about the Giants next year when they're gonna have like resources and well, more... but next year they'll be in line for the regression, right? The low, the one score games. That is some, some of what offset it. I'm sure they'll lose some members of their coaching staff potentially right. too. Um, but uh, you know, I, they, we've said going into the season the arrow was pointing up on them and i and i think more so and and look for what the giants have been for so long you'll take it being that team that kind of wins a little bit unsustainably yeah. uh certainly nothing to like really um thumb your nose at does anyone thumb their nose at anything it's not that's i mean it's an expression but i don't think anyone actually yeah really like does that. this it's is like, thumbing your nose oh like that i thought it was like oh, that i, 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 did like I don't know big. So for the, the audio, um, oh, I think uh, it's audience, like RJ put his thumb on his yeah. nose and held it there. And I like kind of like, like, I think it's kind of like, like acting disinterested, like, you know what I mean? Like just trying to move on. Like, don't talk to me. Um, <laughs> we should, people should start doing that. Do you know what their point differential is? The New York Giants? It has to be low because, well, actually, I did look it up at one point. It's probably like what? So they've won a bunch of games. So it'd probably like what? Plus 18. Oh, hang on. I'm looking at turnover differential. But what wow. do you think their turnover differential is? Uh, I don't know. I have no idea for that. I mean, I, Daniel Jones hasn't turned the ball over a lot. I guess they're like, like plus three, plus three exactly. Wow. Um, so their turnover differential. I'm sorry, their point differential. Goodness gracious. Um, Eagles are plus fifty six. Cowboys are plus thirty. Um, the Commanders minus thirty one. Um, the Giants <laughs> plus twenty. Do you factor like if you figure plus that plus. out, like over six wins? You know what I'm saying? Like that's. You know, yeah, you're you, you're getting by, and you're. That's not yeah. even. That's three point, like just almost three, barely over three points a game. Like they also have not even like controlled a lot of these games. You know, it's not like hey, they're up and then they kind of hold on. It's like you know they're they're kind of like battling and they're getting back into it. Um, well, it looked like they were going to lose this game against the Jaguars, and then exactly, it will look like they're going to lose the Ravens game. <laughs> so like, I hate to like throw the umbrella out. Like, why are they good? I think it's coaching, but it's because like they can survive the stupid stuff that other teams do. Right. Like, and that sounds like, like a flaw. That sounds like you're not doing something, but that's something that a lot of teams can't do. Like the chargers can't do that right now. You know what I mean? Like, but the giants can't. So good for them. They're not in their own way. Yeah. They can, mm -hmm. they can get out of their own way. Um, all right. Let's head to the final game of the week. The Washington commanders, Taylor Heineke, not Tyler Heineke, Taylor Heineke took down. They're going to be a Packers. The number four is kind of coming back in the NFL. Did we get into the Cowboys before we got into the Giants? We did. I'm so sorry. That wow. actually was my Again. bad. I I truly forgot. It's just habit. Old habits stay hard. So it's my mm. bad. Um, my my serious and most profound apologies to the New York Giants. But in my defense, I'm kind of riding high off of owning this New York Eagles, with the Astros, Cowboys podcast. Astros Giants. Astros Cowboys. Astros goodness. Astros Yankees. Goodness gracious. Uh, the Washington Commanders won by two. Speaking of uh, close games. Against the Green Bay Packers. The Packers have now lost to the Jets, excuse me, the Giants, Jets, and Commanders all in a row. And you just hate to see it. Hate to see it. So bothered to see it. I'm so bummed. I'm so sad for Aaron Rodgers. Um, Taylor Heineke, 20 of 33, 201 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Brian Robinson, 20 carries. Looks like he's like all the way back. Um, you know, that's a, obviously we're all excited about that. Terry McLaurin back in the end zone, five catches, 73 yards. Um, on the subject of like not getting in your own way, this kind of felt like it's one thing to win in the NFL, like win impressively. I don't know that like any team, like we've talked about this, like I don't know that any team has like a really impressive win, but it's another thing to like win the games you're supposed to win. And I think a lot of teams are doing that. This was the commanders kind of doing that. Like they went and beat a bad team. I know that's strange because of the Packers, but they did it. They beat a bad team. So good for Ron Rivera. I think there's something to be said for Taylor Harnicky having moxie that's the word everyone wants to use to describe him but it there's something there where i feel like from an outside perspective and po quite possibly on the team as well it's like you go into a game with taylor heineke and you feel like you have some kind of puncher's chance at winning like we have a chance at winning today are we the favorites no but do we have a chance yes and are just heading away for this by the way for the audio uh, audience and i want to make a key point that i want him to react to so now I'm delayed on that because he is gone. I guess he's taking care of Bear uh, or his son. Who knows for sure? Um, but yeah, I think Heineke gives them a chance. Um, whereas, well, I want to get to this when RJ is back, but he's not back. So I'm just stalling now for time. We should talk really quick while he's gone. Totally different topic um, about how the Phillies are going to beat the Astros in the World Series. You can lock it up. I don't care that the Astros haven't lost yet. This is like, again, 2017 Eagles going up against the Patriots. Everyone's like, how could the Eagles possibly beat Tom Brady and Bill Belichick? Well, I said checks. Didn't mean to say that. Uh, well, they could because they were 
freaking like the team of destiny. And you could see it. You could see that the Eagles were not going to lose. And it never looked like they were until uh, Brandon Graham was able to force that uh, fumble. All right, RJ's back. Um, I had to delay my point because I wanted you to react to this. I wanted you to ah, say, and or clever. like get your thoughts on this. So I think going into a game with Heineke, I feel like there's this feeling we have a puncher's chance. With Carson Wentz, like the vibes are just so bad. Like you're almost right. waiting for something to go wrong when Carson Wentz. Like of course he there's there's the big mistake that everyone was waiting to see happen. There's the fumble because you can never not fumble. So I think the vibes have been improved with Heineke. Uh, at the very least, if the if not the talent level or or not t- raw talent, but in terms of the overall uh, like Madden score of your quarterback, let's say, has improved from Heineke to Wentz. At the very least, the vibes have, and that goes not all the way. It's not like the Commanders are gonna even make the playoffs now, but at least you can win some games, and you cannot be like a total uh, mess and disaster, and have everyone just feeling awful about the team. So I think that's what Heineke does give them. And I will say, for as much as I don't believe in the Commanders. Uh, making some triumphant return. I mean, Chase Young's return is still on the horizon. So, like, you know, they still have some hope that they can get a little bit better, um, but they still have a tough schedule, too. Yeah, they, their schedule is very difficult. I mean, next, this week they've got the Fraud Colts in Fraud City um, with um, a quarterback the who went to toughest a, with a quarterback who went to a fraud school in Sam Ellinger because the Colts are, are so fraudulent that they have now thrown Matt Ryan under the bus. Uh, but at, at Indianapolis, then at, I mean, that's – a fairly easy game, obviously, but after that, well, I don't I mean, know. I mean, if you're Washington, you'd rather play Matt Ryan. Like, I know, Ellinger but might be better relative to the like. Find me an easier game on the schedule after this. So, at Indianapolis, Minnesota, at Philly, the Monday night game, at mm-hmm. or maybe at Houston, um, Atlanta, not easy, obviously, um, at New York, by New York, at San Francisco, Cleveland. We don't know what that's mm-hmm. going to look like. Obviously, Watson will be uh, back, right? Probably. Um, yeah. And that's week 17, so like he'll be back. And okay, yeah, accustomed and, like, um, in the flow and, of the right. Yeah. Uh, and again, we don't know what that'll look like, but obviously a tougher sure, game. Sure, but and he's then, better than Jacoby Brissett, at the very least. Right, and then Dallas to wrap it up. So um, I'm with you. It felt like um, – I, I feel like you do this a lot. You're, you're a pretty big foodie. Like, if I like when, when you go to a restaurant, you're like, what are you good at? You know what I mean? Like, what, what's this place known for? You know what I mean? You're like, oh, you guys make great, like, swordfish? I'm not really feeling swordfish, but okay. You know, like, let's do it. You know what I mean? Like, let's try. Let's live a little. Let's Let me, let me try something I've never had before. And to your point, you know, it's like it's it's more of an adventure than like the same old, same old. And like, I don't think that's a criticism of Wentz, but it's just like it, they're stale with him. Like they needed this this spark. And I, again, it's not really a spark, but they needed this change of scene badly. Yeah, I mean, it's not going to last. It's only going to go so far, but it's more exciting. It's just from an entertainment standpoint, as a Washington commander fan, you just rather see this like, OK, this is at least somewhat like kind of enjoyable, fun at times, uh, if not the whole way through. And again, it feels like we have a chance to win today as opposed to we're walking into this game like defeated and waiting for something to go totally wrong. So, uh, yeah, I, again, don't think they're going to be making the playoffs, <laughs> although the NFC is very weak. So, I mean, from that standpoint, it's it's not impossible. But I think the damage is kind of done there. And uh, it w- there will not be four teams making <laughs> the, making the playoffs. It'll be the Eagles, the Cowboys, and the Giants probably in that order. We're still waiting on that, by the way, since like in this new world, a uh, four team, because that's possible, obviously, with, yeah. with the three wild cards. Um, but, um, you yeah, know, hey, um, that, and that, that, would, would be back, that would be fun, especially that, for our podcast. <laughs> that will be back to back years, by the way, that the NFC East, um, they, like the NFC East is the very least going to send two teams to the playoffs. So it'll be back to back years. Yeah, the division has, has sent multiple teams yeah. to the playoffs, which, again, you know, everybody hating on this division. You mm. know what I call it, Brandon, because they're so good. I don't call it the NFC East. I call it the NFC beast oh wow trademark um and i don't know if you've seen this but um this isn't relative to the nfc beast but it did just happen while we were recording um kansas city chiefs defensive end frank clark was suspended two games for violating well, the nfl personal... i'm just saying it's news i mean you know you know just and i checked to make sure like you know i don't know maybe they were playing like the vikings or something this week i you know just off the top of my head uh they're on by uh then they uh they have the titans at home on sunday night football then the jaguars um so Pete Tweeney got a lot of work ahead of him uh, today. Um, okay, let's take uh, – no, you know, the break well, The break has already come because Rachelle is fantastic. She has already gone back and put the break in somewhere that makes more sense time-wise. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm just seeing something too here. Um, I'm seeing secret communication of sea animals discovered. This is on a uh, BBC. This is happening live during the podcast. You know what? My thing was related to the NFL. <laughs> um, so uh, shout out to me. That was so super jump in with breaking news updates. Um, 
I, look, everyone who listens to this is an NFL fan, right? Like, I, I don't know, you know, what, you know, if somebody's taking the Chiefs or something, do you have a ticket on the Chiefs? I don't know. Like, I'm just trying to look out for, you know, we talk about the NFL for a living, all right? So I'm just trying to keep people updated, all right? By the anyway. way, I should probably bring this up. This actually is not a bit, and it is relevant. There's a headline right now on hogshaven.com that says Carson Wentz should never take another snap for the Commanders. Good times. Who's he the quarterback for next year? I, it's not in the NFL. No, like he'll be a backup quarterback. No, people – Jimmy is, like, insist on this, too. I think people are thinking about this all wrong. When has he ever shown the inclination that, like, he thinks he is not the guy? And, like, he and he, he's, he has the self-awareness and is able to humble himself I mean, and realize his situation. Never, never. He's never been in that position. So why are we just assuming that's be, going to happen? What, wouldn't it be, like, a Dan Campbell, like, oh, I've, I've seen Carter, blah, 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 like, I'll, blah, 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 I don't, like I don't think he – he is the starter or he's not playing. Um, He'll hang out in the fridge. I agree market. with you that it should be that way, but like, what, what? Okay, let me rephrase the question. This is more fun. What would be the most fun place for for us for him to be the backup quarterback in? The backup quarterback, clearly. I have. I know the, the answer. Um, Just the Giants. No, I disagree. Uh, Why would no, that not be fun? That would be fun. The answer is the Cardinals. Imagine Carson trying to like calm the debate between Kyler Murray and Cliff Kingsbury. So, I want actually, I want to see him on the same team as Nick Foles. I really want to see that. <laughs> Well, that's not going to happen. He wouldn't do it. He would never. He would never sign with that team. I think he hangs out in free agency and hoping there's some kind of like injury, basically, or, or some kind of opening where he has to come in, uh, or or like you know a team goes into the season with a couple options that they talk themselves into, but then they both stink in training camps. So they have to like desperation sign him. I think it's something like that. Um, yeah, I think it's something like that. Um, okay, so the Colts. We talked about briefly, but it is worth mentioning because they made their change at quarterback this year, uh, this year, this season. Um, and it is for the season, at least according to the fraud that is Frank Reich. Um, so Matt Ryan, not going to be the quarterback for the Colts. The Colts have already played um, the commanders. Or no, they played them this week, obviously. Excuse me, my bad. Um, that's it. They haven't played anybody else. They have the commanders this week. They have the Eagles in week 11. They are at Dallas. That is the next Sunday night game the Cowboys will play, and that's week 13. That's the first week of December. And then they are at the New York Giants um, in week 17. So all three of the playoff teams, seemingly, in the division will get Sam Ellinger as opposed to um, Matt Ryan. Ryan. Maybe Nick Foles gets in there at some point in time. Like I, I don't think that's impossible at this point. Yeah, Ellinger would just have to be like really terrible, I guess. I mean, isn't that like well within the range of possibilities? Yeah, well, but even <laughs> then, I guess too. But I mean, like, but no, but like so bad that like the, the, like can't even function at all, and it's like just embarrassing. I mean, if he struggles, then you keep him in there because you're bad anyway, and you're trying to see if he can play through it. But yeah, I think I think this is notable though, and this is an important thing for the division because not only is there a quarterback change, and not only did Frank Reich specify that the plan is for it to be for the rest of the season, um, he could be fired, right? Like, like, right? Like that's. You know that's it. That that is an important detail he, for the NFC. He should like, be fine. <laughs> I well, hey, look, dude. I mean, you're preaching to the choir here. All right. You know where but, he's gonna. You know where he's gonna end back up in Philly. I mean, yeah. Nick Sirianni and him are like boys. So he's, yeah. he's, that's gonna be. So Shane Steichen's gonna become the head coach of the Colts or the Panthers or whoever, and then Reich will come back and be Philly's offensive coordinator. Um, that would be really funny. Um, he is to the Eagles what Matt Nagy is to the Chiefs. So, yeah. Um. Wow. Um, anyway, um, so that's an important detail. Like as we look down the, the second half, we're getting close to that point of the season is that a team that every single one of these top three teams play, sorry, commanders, um, could be void of Frank Reich, could be void of um, of even Sam Ellinger at this point in time. Uh, the Eagles this coming week, as we mentioned. Oh, they're not going to fire Frank Reich in season. Sorry, I didn't mean that. They're oh, I think they that. could. I, no. I totally think they could. No, dude, they're, they're at the that Colts. Point. They have class. Like they're, you know, they have some like BS like that going on. They didn't. When's the last time they fired a coach in season? Because um, they didn't fire Pagano in season, right? They no, and, and remember after. when they were gonna fire him, and they had the like players go up to like Ursay's office and like you know like they, like Rudy put their jersey on the t- jerseys on the table type thing, and they kept them. Frank Reich's like too nice of a guy to fire in season. You know what I mean? That's like, so stupid. That, no, he's an you know awful I mean? head coach. I mean, you know what I'm talking about though? Like, but they won't because like they, I think the people who get canned like that are like a holes, and I don't think he's like that. One of them's got to go though, like him or Chris Bowden. Somebody's got to get fired. I agree. I don't. I'm not. I mean, because like I'm just saying, with likelihood, they've got the Commanders this week. I think we're both probably taking the Commanders to win, right? 
Um, then they're at New England, who and they stink. But again, these are the Colts. Then they're at Vegas. They got the Eagles, the Steelers, the Cowboys. Like, what's the win? Like, what what game are they winning in this stretch? The Colts are one of eleven teams who have not fired a head coach midseason since two thousand, so twenty two years. I mean, whatever. Um, Eagles have the Steelers this coming week. Um, Steelers, is, um, Steagles. Did you know they were the same team. <laughs> I hate that so much. Um, Eagles are is, eleven point favorites. That grew, right? Because it was 10 and a half, I think, or 10. I think it opened at like 10 and a half. Yeah, yeah. now it's 11 or maybe it changed since whatever. But um, the point is it's double digits. The Steelers have not won in Philadelphia since 1965. In Pittsburgh. No, the Steelers have not won in Philadelphia since 19. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I, I misheard you. Wow. Yeah. Holy crap. The game's in Philly. Wow. I mean, they've only played like, what, nine times? But still, like, That's you know, the crazy. Steelers are. They've uh, won multiple Super Bowls. Yeah, they're a really good franchise <laughs> for whatever Super reason. Bowls since then. And I know it's like different teams, so that doesn't always mean everything. But I think there is something to like a fact, like this, like a history of a team not playing super well somewhere. I said it about the Eagles um, in Arizona, and that worried me. And sure enough, that game was pretty close. I'm not saying think, it means. I think that only everything. matters if you're Frank Reich and you're a fraud and you're in I don't know. I think there's I mean, there could be something to that. So the mentality of that, I don't know. Maybe there's so nothing to it. But I, it's 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 the evidence. The evidence is that they don't typically play well. It doesn't mean they can't, but they have not historically played well in Philadelphia. And I, I know will, Steelers fans feel that way. I've talked I will to say Steelers this. fans, uh, including Jeff Hartman from um, mm. uh, Behind the Steel Curtain, who. Like, he, Back when the Steelers were good, I used to like I would talk to him about whatever Steelers Eagles game like, they had one back in twenty sixteen. Eagles, yeah. and he was always like, I every time they play in Philly, like it lost, like I don't, I don't care, like they're just gonna lose. Man, they were um, a Donovan McNabb choke away from meeting in the Super Bowl, Super Bowl forty three. Could have been Steelers Keystone Eagles. State Bowl. That's right. Um, wow, uh, in the most opposite state from Philadelphia in Arizona. Interesting. Um, okay, what? Why is that true? Like uh, geographically, like top right, bottom left. You know what I'm saying? Like crisscross okay. um but um sure. what i wanted to say about this game is i think this is the last chance for the like the loss we didn't see coming for the eagles um or like the not last chance but the greatest chance in this upcoming stretch um like my point is like we talk about like can you see a path i could totally see a path where like the steelers do it because again like that's the Steeler way now different teams whatever but it is mike tomlin like you just it's so impossible to like completely totally count him out i'm not banking on that by any stretch but I can talk myself into that happening much more than I can the Texans winning in the middle of the World Series or the Commanders winning on Monday Night Football or the Colts winning um, or and even maybe not more than the Packers because, you know, the quarterback matters so much. Mm -hmm. But so that game is week 12. I think this is again, I'm not saying there's a high probability for a loss. I think this is the highest opportunity for a loss until that Packers game. And even that Packers game is I mean, Packers are 10 point dogs against the Bills this week. Not that the Eagles are the Bills, but they're very close, obviously. So I agree on the Tomlin point. I mean, like factually, no team has been better against the spread as underdogs since he was hired in 2007. Like the Steelers have the best record against the spread. Um, they're 48, 28, and 5. So 63.2 cover percentage against the spread. And then they're 39 and 42 straight up, which is also the best. Like it's, it's, I know that's like slightly below 500. That might not seem impressive. But like as an underdog, to can, like almost be 500 as an underdog, like that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty good. And if you like... You, you know, shorten that sample to the last several years to kind of give you more of an idea of something closer to this Steelers team than, you know, teams back in 2007. They're 23, 10 and one against the spread and 17 and seven straight up. So, yeah, they're 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 like a team that certainly uh, cannot entirely be discounted as underdogs. Now, you were talking about point differential earlier. Do you know the team that rings dead last in the NFL in point differential? I thought it was the Saints or is it the Steelers. The Steelers. Wow. Yeah. So maybe I was look, still looking at turnover differential when I saw that. So, so not a good team. And do you also know who has two touchdowns and seven interceptions this season? It's Kenny Pickett. Mm. Uh, maybe he's due for some good luck or positive regression. Cause that's, you know, that's a lot of, it's also it's seven turnovers or sorry, seven picks. And I think Matt Ryan and uh, Stafford have more. <laughs> they also have obviously like a lot more passing attempts than he does. Um, so uh, I, I, like, I acknowledge the Tomlin factor, but I just think the Eagles defense is probably going to be able to come away with some turnovers. And there's still no, if TJ Watt was playing in this game, yeah, you know, I'd be a little bit more worried, but he's not. He's still banged up. Um, so not too worried. There's talking about angles, RJ. Kenny Pickett grew up as an Eagles fan. He grew up in Ocean Township, New Jersey. So there's going to be Bryce a lot Harper, of that. the Cowboys fan, though. So he's going to be, I mean, again, you're not hurting me with this because he's going to beat the Astros in the World Series and then be World Series MVP. And then. Um, he'll be at an Eagles game, I'm sure, with the World Series trophy that the Astros did not win. They did not mm. cheat uh, enough to allow themselves to win it. <laughs> um, 
I mean, it's just factually true. They cheated. Like you have to acknowledge, um, they literally did. They got punished for it. They're cheaters. You, this is some, this is a life you have to live. I mean, they cheated. Th- look, I'm not going to flesh this subject out, but like this is a case where multiple things are true as well. But again, I don't want to go down that tangent because uh, I want to get through. Preview you can't. There's games. no like to stand the, on they the cheated. Eagles. I'm, again, I'm not trying to stand, but whatever. That's different. Different conversation. Um, so we both think the Eagles win. I'll take the Steelers to cover, um, just cause. Um, but I mean, this is. A, I think. A, I think it's like a late back or points. cover. Um, I will say on BGN real quick to that point, like uh, 1,735 votes, 36% have the Steelers covering. So, you know, it's not like a, it's not like Eagles fans. Oh, yeah. Are, Eagles oh, fans really feel themselves out. right now. No, no city in the world is as like narcissistic in this moment. As no, I'm saying so, like, that seems lower uh, to me than I would expect it. Only 64% are saying the Eagles are going to cover. I thought it would be more than that. Um, so we both got the Eagles winning. The Giants, as mentioned, on the road at Seattle, three point underdogs. Give me the points, baby. Seahawks. I can't pick my Seahawks for lock of the week because I already picked them for the, right. the, the look at, but I feel pretty good about the Seahawks. Wait, so you're can't... laying the points. You're not taking the points. Oh, uh, wait. The no, you said, oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I'm giving the points. Right. Yes. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pick against the Giants until like the bottom truly comes out. I, I recognize that we all like anticipated to come out soon, but I'm, I'm done kind of like expecting that. Um, I'm just, I'm interested. So I'll take the but Giants. But they have to lose. They're so due for a loss. Right? I know aren't they, they are. Aren't, aren't but, they more but than like any we, other team? Aren't they? But due like this, for a the loss? Se- the Seahawks haven't been like the sustainable monster week in and week out. Like they they've had down games too. Um, so sure. I'll take the Giants. Um, mm. At this point, I trust Brian Dable more than I trust Pete Carroll. And I certainly trust Pete Carroll more than I did in the summer. Um, obviously, I mean, Pete Carroll's having quite the glow up. Um, but I'll, I'll take the Giants just marginally. I'll certainly take yeah. them to cover. Um, I think they win though, but I'm not. I'm not taking that. But you know, I'm doing. I like the space. Seahawks. Uh, I know you it's do. not even disrespect. To I know the you do. They're another. The they're another better. Green Bird team that has a first round pick that's going to be amazing in 2023 because another NFL team is stupid. Hmm. That's your thing. That's your bit. I did like. I, I did like the Seahawks. Uh, even pre Russ, honestly, I do have a soft spot for them. I used um, to play with them as a. You know, I, maybe I've talked about this before with uh, you know the Sean Alexander Madden 2005. Oh, that was such a fun Madden year. Um, Bobby Taylor was on those Seahawks again. We, um, that was, I mean, that was a really good Seahawks team. So you were like a front runner back then. I mean, they obviously were coming out the Super Bowl, uh, or about to make the Super Bowl at the time against against the Steelers. But I had a soft spot for them. I I, I could respect them. We we all have the Madden teams that we used. I, my cousin and I loved to use the Steve McNair, Eddie George Titans. Just loved it. Okay. Yeah. That is a Madden team. I miss those Titans uniforms so much. Like, I don't like the new Titans uniforms. I miss the white helmet. Like, Mm. it was such a clean-looking helmet. But anyway. One of um, the uh, Madden teams I used um, was the uh, (laughs) – the what was his name? Josh. What was the Bucks quarterback his name? uh, Uh, Freeman? Yeah, Josh Freeman, LeGarrette Blunt. Creamsicle version. I I used them with my buddy Alex online. And we would – and, like – like Eric Bland had like a 99 stiff arm or almost or whatever. So just like mash the A button and like no one could tackle us. Former Titan, like Eric Blunt too. Uh, obviously former Eagle. Was he? Briefly? Yeah. And do you, I do, I vividly remember him throwing that punch while at Oregon. Like I vividly remember that. Moment. Yeah. Everyone remembers um, that. But um, I also vividly remember him, uh, him helping the Eagles win the Super Bowl. Anyway. Um, okay. So I'm taking the Eagles and Giants. You're taking the Eagles and Seahawks. Uh-huh. Um, Cowboys are, I think it's down to nine and a half. Um, you know, Monday Night Football had a lot of people sniffing around the Bears. Oh, my um, God. What an overrated Justin Fields performance. This guy, no one gets more now, credit for being like, like making like a, a good play or two. Do you? On the subject of like, you mentioned the Steelers having not won in Philadelphia since what was in 1965. That was the yep. Bears first win ever in Foxborough. That's crazy I, to me. I believe um, it. I do think like there is something cool to me to them preventing Belichick from passing George Hallis. Like I'm a sucker for like NFL history sure. like that. Like I love the story of the um, 85 Bears, for example, the lone loss being to the Dolphins. Like that is super cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and like at least at that point, like in 1985, the Dolphins were like 13 years removed, which isn't a long time. You know what I mean? From the perfect season versus now, like George Hallis's mm-hmm. last win was like a million years ago, but it is still kind of cool. I like um, like to that point. I, I found probably more value than anyone when the Eagles finally like overtook the giants all time series record. Cause it mm-hmm. just spoke to how much they were dominating them. And they'd never, they literally never led the series since it started. Like they started Oh, and two against them and they never had the lead. And now they're, Eagles are going to take overtake Washington probably at some point here. Um, so Dallas is obviously further away. Just to trash Aaron Rodgers again for like three weeks running, he the Packers had an opportunity to surpass the Bears for like all time winning percentage. I don't know if you've been seeing this. Um, the Bears, uh, lot they were 
what were they? Two and zero. They were two, um, three and zero. They got to three and zero. They lost to the Giants. They lost to the Vikings. They lost to the Commanders. So all three of those weeks, Aaron Rodgers had opportunities. Um, and or, sorry, for two of those weeks, he had an opportunity, and then couldn't beat the Commanders. And now he's even further behind because this Bears went over the Patriots. So, um, is this is my question? So he's now two games behind. He's got to have. He's got to outwin the Bears by two games the rest of the season. Do they do? No. It? So you, you think they don't pass the Bears this season? And why would you bet on the Packers right now? I mean, I just – I mean, I wouldn't, but th- these are I the Packers. I think they still have a ceiling that scares me, but I'm, I think their vibes are terrible. Awful. So, like, very, very quickly because we got to pick the other games. Um, Packers just win or loss at Buffalo. Why are we doing this? It doesn't matter. I'm curious. We're, we went down this road at Buffalo. Uh, lose the Buffalo, obviously. At Detroit. Uh, they beat them once already, or did they play yet? They haven't played yet. Uh, okay, they lose to uh, – they beat Detroit. Why? Okay, that's one. They lose to Dallas. Yeah. Tennessee. Wait, no, that game is in. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, they lose to the Titans, too. Okay. Uh, at Philly, loss. At Chicago, that's a swing point. So, not counting that game. The Bears win that game. They already, I think they already, they, they lost to the Packers already. So, they're not, Packers aren't going to sweep them. Right. Okay. Then the Rams. Uh, they lose. Uh, at Miami, a loss. Loss. Minnesota. Loss. Detroit, and say they win, right? I know we uh, gave them the okay, Detroit, whatever. Sure. So, that's two wins. So, you're banking on the Bears only winning one more game then. Like to to pass them, you know what I'm saying? Because you you need two wins to pass. Yeah, them I'm saying for... they're not going to pass them. I know, I know, but so that's what I'm saying. I have the like, Bears beating them too. So you need the Bears to have at least one more win. Is my point. Um, All right, none it, of this, this. No one cares about this. Anyway. The Bears play. Um, I don't know, Cowboys. man. Look, look into their schedule. It's kind of hard to find another win for the Bears. Maybe at Atlanta. Maybe at the Jets. I don't know, but. Um, Joel Justin Fields is back, baby. Haven't you seen? Dude, I cannot tell you how much like hype I saw about because I didn't watch all of Monday Night Football. A, a lot of it I missed. But like the way I was just seeing tweets about him versus his final stat line was, where he completed 13 passes, had under 200 passes. Well, he had like yards. 10 rushing attempts in the first half, too. Like it was a very like Tim Tebow ish game. Did um, not even run for 100 yards rushing. Like this on, is like at an 85.2 pass rating, fumbled four times. Like this is on, your hero. Twitter? On the subject of the of the fumbled four Bears, times very quickly before we pick the Cowboys and Commanders games, I will say I'm not I'm certainly not like to a place where I am ever worried about the Eagles, but from week twelve on, like this this little five week stretch for the Eagles looks a little bit more difficult. If you believe in the Bears, I don't to be very clear here. <laughs> no, um, I don't. But this little like this five week stretch looks just a little bit like thornier than it did to me a few weeks ago. Okay, Green Bay looks really bad. Tennessee. Certainly spunky at New York. That Games is definitely a tough game yeah. um, at Chicago. Again, I know nobody believes whatever at Dallas, even that New Orleans game like that. That is such a no. I mean, I don't think any Eagles fan wants to. And I'm not saying that like hear me. Out. I don't think the Saints are good, but like it depends what the Eagles want. What do they value? Like the first round pick or you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> hey, like that's a real thing. Um, so I'll, Eagles have owned that, that matchup, though. That's that's where the first the, the number one seed is won for the Eagles is that five week stretch right there or maybe one or lost. That's an important yeah. five week stretch. The giants. I think they lose to the giants. I think that's their first loss in, in New York. Um, um, Cowboys bears this week. Uh, I'll take the Cowboys. Of course, I'm not betting on Justin Fields. So we both got the Cowboys getting to six and two at the bye. Um, commanders. Colts, Where's that game? I don't it's know. In Dallas. It is. Okay. Yeah. Then definitely. How did you miss my whole, like, it's so unfair with the giants or the bears having to go I through blah, blah, blah. Uh, the Commanders. What do you think the Dallas is, are is nine point favorites? By the way, they were ten uh-huh. uh, when it opened. Um, Commanders in Indianapolis. What do you think that line is? Uh, I think it's going to be com- uh, Commanders minus one. Colts minus three. Hmm, okay. Why? That's my lock of the week. By the way, <laughs> on the NFL show, I the mean, Commanders why? plus three. Yeah, I mean, why? Who? Why? What? What? Who I don't yeah, believe I don't in know. Frank Reich at all. This is really stupid. Um, so they win. I think the, the commanders win. You just hit your right? mic. Yeah, I did on accident. Are you still there? Okay, I thought I, I hit yeah. the mic and the computer destroyed itself or something. Um, no, that's not how it works. Okay, so the commanders get to five hundred this week. What do you all think? I guess, but it's just I don't know. It doesn't seem super meaningful. Like cause this, it's just. Like the ceiling, like what's their ceiling? And just like, just by virtue of being in this division, like, like if they're playing in the NFC South, sure, yeah, they could win the division still. But not do the you case. do you know how many teams they have better? How many NFC teams they have better playoff odds than? No, 
they're tied with the Bears and the Saints to like really put this in perspective. They have the better playoff have the odds overall pick right now that they're sending to the, the Eagles. The only NFC teams, the like super wide open NFC, who they have better playoff odds than are the Carolina Panthers and Dan Campbell's Detroit Lions. Well, part of it again, like I said before, they've so they've already lost twice in the division, which is tough. And then they've lost, I think, three total NFC games, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, they kind of have some things going against them in that regard. And also like um with the Eagles, not that they're in contention with them, but like there's some common game stuff there too, because they lost to the Lions and the Cowboys mm-hmm. and Eagles have already beaten the Lions. Like there's 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 a lot of tiebreakers and like stuff working against them. Um well so we both then have the Eagles, Cowboys, and um, nice. Giant. I'm sorry, no Eagles, Cowboys, and Commanders all winning. Oh yeah, sorry, I you're talking about the playoff picture. Yeah, we both we both think the Cowboys and Commanders cover. Obviously, Commanders because we have them winning. Um, and hmm. we both think the Steelers cover, and we're we're split on the Giants because I think they win, which means they cover. I think the Colts can win. I feel better about the Colts winning this week than, or sorry, the yeah, the Colts winning this week than I do the Giants winning. Wow. Um, on that note, let's get out of here. Give me three random let's birds. Three go random birds. Phillies. Mockingbird. Cardinal. And parakeet. Toucan. No. Ooh. Stupid. Mine was better. No, it wasn't. Ghost Joe's. <laughs>